back to my Epoch Server tutorial series where I show you how to set up and modify your own DAISY Epoch Server. This video covers how to add a custom debug menu and how to do some modifications to it. This properly modifies the debug menu without leaving the old one in. A lot of the other debug monitors that you find around just overwrite the one that's already there and leave it there causing some weird issues with the game. The players will be able to toggle this menu by pressing the insert key and this is one of the mods I've written myself. Now before we begin if you're using Infistar you have to disable the debug menu from that or this will not work. I'm not sure the exact spot in which you have to disable it because I don't use that software but it's in one of the init systems for that anti-hack. Go to the link in the description and it will take you to this github page. You will see different epoch versions here. This is because there are some files that are specific to certain epoch versions and I will keep updating this as much as possible. Whenever there's a new epoch version you should see it here. So whichever one you're using just click on it and it will take you to the proper spot. So if you're using 1042A it will take you to the required spot for that and if you're using 1051 it will take you to the same spot. This is important because whichever link you click on will decide what files you get. So click on 1051 if that's the one you're using and then scroll up a little bit and hit the download zip. And now you'll see that you've got the download here. Move it to your desktop and go ahead and extract that now. Now lower this to your taskbar. Don't close it. We'll be needing that later. Open your server and navigate to your missions folder. For me, I am using the Trinaris map, but this will work on any of the other maps in this folder. Okay, now go back to the GitHub page and look at step four. With this step, there's a little bit of a difference between the two. If you do not have a custom compiles, you'll have to do step A. If you do, you'll need to do step B. I'm going to cover both with you just to be safe that nothing goes wrong. If you do not have a custom compiles, you'll need to open your init SQF. In here, you'll have to find this line, which is right here where all the other preprocessed file line numbers are. And you'll see that there is a compiles line right here, just as it shows up here. We need to change that to read custom slash compiles.sqf. So custom slash compiles.sqf. Make sure that it is this slash and not the other one. There are two different types. And then go ahead and save your init. Then what you need to do is go back to the files that we've downloaded and in the custom folder here copy everything into this custom folder. If you don't have a custom folder already just copy the whole folder into the mission. Now that was step A but let's say you already have a custom compiles. Do not overwrite that compiles file. If you do some of your items will stop working we have to go in and manually edit it some. So go into your custom folder and find your compiles.sqf which is right here. In here you want to look for the daisy interrupt. So just copy it. If you're using notepad++ you can just use control F and find it that way or you can open up the find through the menu system up top. So as you can see we have found daisy space interrupt and you need to change this part here to say custom daisy space interrupt. 
where essentially what you could do is just copy this whole line here and just paste it over that and then I'm going to move it over so that it looks pretty still. Then you can just save it and you can minimize that and look at the files we downloaded again inside the custom copy everything but the compiles so you want the debug monitor and the space interrupt you just copy those over and then it would work the same as if you did step A now remember that only matters if you didn't have a if you already had a custom compiles scroll down to step 5 and copy this code here go back to your init sqf and find the if not is dedicated code block go down to the very bottom of it and paste that code in as you can see it is still inside of the if block it must stay inside or it will not work properly you'll start getting errors in your server after doing that go ahead and save your init. This should be working in the server and ready to go but you need to make changes. This is a default layout that will look similar to this but with a few different wordings for it that you have to change on your own. Now to make those changes we go back into our mission folder. Make sure you're not using the files that we downloaded. Go ahead and close that. Make sure you are in the actual missions folder here inside of our custom folder you'll find the debug monitor and you will see this code block area here this is where you want to make your changes in the first line here you'll see that there is a spot that says server name here this doesn't have to be your server name but I really suggest it to be that way players know what server they're on and they can tell their friends the name of it for me I'm just gonna put Knox's test server I would suggest keeping it as short as possible long names will make the debug menu look really weird the next line you can see that between these two carrots there are server website here and that doesn't have to be a server website if you don't have one you can either change this to something else or you can delete the entire line let's say that we don't have a website and we want to just put a different text here we'll make it say have fun but if you feel there's no need for that line go ahead and delete it the next few lines deal with the actual items you see here the players online murders all that kind of stuff so if we skip down near the bottom you'll see these last two lines have a TeamSpeak IP spot if you don't have a TeamSpeak you can just delete this line or as always put something else there for me I'm just going to delete it this bottom line don't mess with it this bottom one deals with the server restart time now this is defaultly set for a three hour restart if you have a different restart hour than three you'll have to go up top here and change that so let's say we want to have a five hour restart five times sixty is three hundred so we change the eight one eighty to three hundred it's always in multiples of 60 so it's the hours times 60 and that's what goes right here in this spot this won't be 100 percent exact and it's going to be incredibly hard to get it exact because when you restart your server it takes time for it to load and that time isn't always the same and depending on any kind of wait timers you have it could really throw it off this will just be a slight difference if you want you can actually lower this by one so instead of a five hour restart we've got oops, one minute less than a five hour restart
that's the safest way to go because when this hits zero, players will know that it's about to restart any second. You don't need it to be exact, you just need it to be a notification to players that there's a server restart within a minute of there being a one or a zero. And as you can see over here, this is what the server restart timer looks like. You can see that there's 37 minutes left until the restart. Now that actually completes the install for this, so go ahead, save it, and join your server and see what it looks like. If you press the insert key, the menu will disappear. If you press the insert key again, it will come back. This is for players who don't always like having the debug menu there the entire time. As always, if you have any issues, go ahead and leave me a comment below. If you need to contact me, only contact me on YouTube or the Epoch forums. Do not contact me in any other way, please. And that's pretty much it for this video. I have a few more coming up alongside this one. As always, thank you for watching. See you guys in the next video.